Ideas, imagination, inspiration, macro world. Here's your host, Ray Scott. Thanks for spending some time with us here at Macro World, and I hope you are well today. Today we're going to be shooting grapes macro style, which means we're going to be getting up really, really close to these grapes. And the whole point of it is to then stylize them and turn them into something that is certainly different, hopefully special, and maybe something that you haven't seen before. Now, we worked on grapes on my other channel, Visual Art Photography, and we stylized those. Now, you can see that video if you'd like by clicking the link directly below this video and it'll take you straight to that video. All right, so you have a different look at grapes on that channel. But here at Macro World, like I said, we're going to be getting very, very close and then giving uh, these grapes different treatments and seeing what happens. And it should be a lot of fun and it's a great project to do indoors. So let's get going. So a bunch of grapes on a plate. We're using a 100 millimeter macro lens. Lighting is really simple. It's just a couple of lights shining indirectly on these grapes. So I don't have the lights actually right on the grapes. You can use window lighting, especially on an overcast day, would be just as effective. This is something that can be done anywhere in your home and you don't need special lighting whatsoever. In fact, window lighting might even end up being better in the end. Who knows? So that's what we're, that's what we're doing with this. Also, I'm using a tripod because some of my exposures are quite long. I'm using ISO 100, so yeah, some of the exposures are pretty long and uh, we're doing macro work, so you really need that stability. So cameras on a tripod with a remote release. You know, when you're up close doing macro work, it's very difficult in terms of keeping things really clean. And as you can see, this is a virtual mess. And part of that is because of the subject matter. Part of it is because of the depth of field I'm using, which is F22. So even up really, really close, a lot of stuff is in focus, is just not adding anything to the image either. It's, it just looks really messy. But because we're going to be stylizing this and changing things around a little bit, it's not going to be quite as important. But there are things to be aware of. Again, compositionally, you see the stem going across the top horizontally. It adds a little something. But again, the image isn't very good, in my opinion. And one thing that's going for it, though, is the water. These grapes have been washed, so there's water left on them, and that's going to be an important element down the road. Let's take a look at something else here. Okay, this one. Um, shot at a, a bit of a shallower depth of field, and compositionally in even a little bit tighter, and you've got basically three elements that are working here, so it's a little bit better. It's a little bit of a better start to work into something else, but it's not what I wanted. What's coming up next is the composition that I wanted, which basically shows you three grapes, and they're wet with water, and they're kind of shiny, and the stems are there, but, you know, to give you a sense of what's going on, but nothing is, there's not too much competition, and you pretty much know what the subject matter is. Now, the idea here is to take this natural shot, because we're in the mode of experimenting where at home we've got maybe a little bit of extra time so let's really have a lot of fun with this so we're going to go over to topaz and topaz studios that's the software i'm using for this particular one and you can use any number of software out there i mean there's all kinds of different ways to get to different things and we're using something called watercolor so you get that painterly look look at that and that's something that appealed to my eye all right let's take a look let's go over to topaz now quickly um, and, and take a look at how I got there. We've arrived in Photoshop and we're going to access Topaz uh, Studios through uh, Photoshop. Now, we're going to change the image, or at least I did. I changed the image from a 16-bit image to an 8-bit image. That's because uh, often with different software, it's hard to access the filters properly when your images are too big and 8 bits uh, works really great. So the first thing we're going to do is go over to the right hand side here. I'm going to deactivate the topaz layer. So this is what we're coming in with. Now normally what I would do is I would go to the background layer and duplicate the background layer by hitting command J. So you never want to work on the background layer. You don't want to destroy the pixels there. So you work on a different layer and then I will come up. By the way, that image thing, you can go to mode, image, mode, 
and change it from 16 bits to 8 bits, okay? Then we're going to go up to the filter gallery and come on down to Topaz Studios and go into Topaz Studio. Now, of course, I already did that particular job, but uh, just to show you, this is not a, a Topaz uh, lesson or anything like that. It has nothing to do with that. This is about uh, just showing you what I'm doing, and you'll probably be using different softwares and things like that, so it, it doesn't really matter. So I go to my favorites panel because I have a few presets here. And what I used to get what I wanted was I used watercolor. And so you just press on the preset there and you get your watercolor. Now, uh, you can come over to the right-hand side and adjust this and, and make it uh, more or less and all kinds of different things, change the brush stroke pattern, all that kind of stuff. So, uh, but this is what I ended up with. And then in the, in the end, you just, when you're satisfied with what you have, you hit OK, and it takes you back to Photoshop. And you have your image. And you know something in Photoshop, if you want to, if you don't, if it's too much of an effect, you can always go over to the opacity and you can uh, lessen the opacity a little bit if you want, like that. You know, just dial it back a bit and have just a little bit or full. You can change blend modes, do all sorts of things. The main thing in all of this is to experiment and have a lot of fun doing it. So that's how I did that. Again, not a Topaz Labs or a Studios tutorial. This is just, you know, one way of a million ways to get to different things, different effects. And I really urge you to try your luck at different things. But let's go to something that I want to talk about before we go to another effect. And that is the depth of field and the factor that that has in your macro photography. This shot here, taken at F22. Again, we have that messy thing where it's almost like too much is in focus, you know? You can see the stem and you can see everything in back and that's good. And if you're going to stylize this, you know, maybe it doesn't really matter so much, but it's something to be aware of. So this is F22. This next one, F11, then F5.6, and then an F2.8 for a very shallow aperture. So it depends on the effect you want. Okay, let's get to our last image that we're going to stylize. And it's this one here where you're up really, really close. You can see the stems and everything like that and the water drops and it's shiny. And it really has potential in my mind because I had something going on that I thought I might try to do. So I went over to Topaz again and I used something called color sketch number two and watch what happened. Look at that. It's almost metallic -y. It's a, it's a different sheen and the colors are so rich. Let's go back to the original. That's the original shot. And then with color sketch number two in Topaz Studios, bang. So I encourage you to really dig in with anything, with any kind of software, you, you know, and all kinds of different effects. And these were just a couple that I showed you. Well, there are endless amounts, right? In different combinations, you can add this to something else and something else to something else and subtract here and add there. Limitless, absolutely limitless. This is just something hopefully that gives you a little bit of a little boost and, and gets you going on something that maybe you weren't thinking about. As you've often heard me say, go crazy, go nuts, experiment in the wildest ways you can possibly imagine. It's going to be a lot of fun with your macro grapes stylized. Until next time, I'm Ray Scott reminding you to shoot small, but think big. Take care.